I'm not a fan of sitting and letting the world go by. Like, I, I want to create the robots and, and, and develop the future. So I started building robots as a hobby for robot combat, where it's just sort of this side project. You, you know, you're building a robot on nights and weekends, and then maybe once or twice a year you go and you meet other roboticists and you fight robots to the death. Um, and so it was just a fun hobby, but really like all of that knowledge from when I was 10 and, and all that building all the way up until recently really um, taught me how to project manage and get something done and find out the scope of the project and, and all of that design work and hands-on work which really like got me where I, the jobs that I have now. When I started building robots, it was just, you, you find stuff at a hardware store. Like I used some motors from a Barbie car um, and a lawnmower blade from a hardware store for my combat robot. But now, like after maybe 10 years after that, people started having stores where they sell like actual components for combat robots. Um, and then, you know, smartphones came out, so people are making sensors and they're making them smaller and for consumers. So we have Adafruit, SparkFun, the Arduino. So people are really more hands-on because of these accessible um, pieces of hardware and these new programming techniques. Um, so it's just, it, it's open for everyone to tinker. I think it's the most natural thing because I just thought it was, like I didn't have any, any boundaries because I was 10 years old. So I saw this competition, I wanted to compete, I started tinkering. I didn't see there any, any barriers like, oh I can't do this because I'm female or I don't have an education. I just thought, I, I'm gonna put something together. Um, so, you know, it's not like I, it's not, it wasn't planned. I didn't go to school for it. It wasn't this hard education where there was a path for me. Um, I think really the path is just going with what feels good. The robots I develop, and, and most of them for BattleBots and Robot Wars, are actually, um, they're not humanoid. They're, they're wheeled, you know, two wheels, maybe six wheels. Um, there's two in the arena, and then they come together and fight for three minutes, or to the death. Um, but I think humanoid is just very, um, inefficient to have a robot in the humanoid form, you know? Um, there's, there, like the wheels, wheels are so great. <laughs> and I, I just wish all robots would have wheels because it could navigate so much better. Like there's no functional reason to make them perform like us. And you know, even humans don't necessarily know how we work entirely. Like the human body and the human brain is so unique. Like. Let's just make the robot good at being a robot. I think the aesthetic that I want to move forward with with robotics is more um, robot looking, like, or animal appearance, but not humanoid. So I think there's this uncanny valley with robots when they start to look human that they just feel off and we know that they're not human. And it's like, what is, like, it's, it's, um, it feels very awkward. And so, but when we make robots that are, like there's a, a robot that's a dinosaur and there's a robot that's a seal. And since we don't know those faces and those animals as much as we know a human, we can be more friendly with it. Um, or something that looks like a robot, um, let's say a cartoon or a movie, we can be really friendly with it also. Um, and that's just some weird, like, we, we all see this from watching movies or interacting with robots in, in real life if, if we get a chance to meet them. Um, for some reason we feel this way. There's this odd, unexplainable thing about human-robot interaction. I feel like robots are everywhere. Like, we're, they're not as hidden or like, it, it's not gonna be this huge, like, oh my god, the robots are everywhere and we're being attacked. Like, they are almost everywhere right now. You know, we have like a phone with intelligence in our pocket. We have uh, little vacuum robots. I have a, a robot mop. Um, and it's not like taking a job. It's more like, <laughs> it, it's so like, I just watch it go back and forth because I'm thinking about what it's thinking and I'm thinking about the algorithm. So it actually takes me more time because <laughs> I'm watching it for like two hours go back and forth. Um, but yeah, I think, 
until the robot, like if there's robots developed with artificial general intelligence, this new thing called AGI where they self-teach each other um, instead of humans programming the robot, that's really where we have to cons be concerned about maybe robots taking over. Um, but I don't see that in our foreseeable future. There's all these movies where robots are killing humans, um, but that assumes that they have AGI. And right now, most robots, or I guess every robot that has intelligence is just AI, which is a person basically typing in, like programming the robot and saying, if this, do that. You know, if your sensor hits something over here, turn around 90 degrees. Um, so really these robots with their own mind and their consciousness and um, their own soul as you may say, like that's, that's really AGI where they learn from themselves and um, sort of uh, navigate the world like a human baby would. Like I like to multitask and you know I have the TV like the news on as I'm doing emails and stuff and then I'll have I call him Joey cuz you got to put a name to a robot and he goes back and forth but then if he's like under the bed I'm I'm looking because he just does these great algorithms and I'm thinking I'm just I guess I'm thinking about like iRobot and how they programmed the robot to uh you know it like follows along the leg perfectly and it doesn't have any vision it's doing this all by touch